Okay, chapter two, uh, video seven, we're up to the Equal Protection Clause. Okay, this is the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment was the amendment that was passed after the Civil War in order to create equal rights for uh, blacks and, and whites. But it goes a lot further than that and has been interpreted a lot more broadly than that. So the Equal Protection, the uh, 14th Amendment basically says, no state shall deny to any person uh, the equal protection of the laws, uh, etc., etc. Okay, so notice the language, no state. So it doesn't apply on its face to the federal government. So it's sort of the reverse of what we were talking about before. The Bill of Rights, the first ten amendments, apply to the federal government and not the states. The states are, uh, it applies to the states through the 14th Amendment Due Process Clause. Here we're talking about equal protection, which pre prevents a state from denying it. The federal government is uh, prohibited from denying equal protection under the Due Process Clause of the Fifth Amendment because the Supreme Court has ruled that the Fifth Amendment Due Process Clause also means or includes equal protection. Okay, so that's important. All right, so in any equal protection situation, we're dealing with discrimination between two classes. Okay, the word discrimination can be misleading. Okay, I used to have clients come in to me and say, what can you do for me, what can I do for you? And they'd say, well, my employer discriminated against me. And I'd say, how did they discriminate? And they'd say, well, um, they uh, didn't give me a raise because um, they don't like me. And I said, well, liking, not liking you is not a illegal discrimination. The illegal discrimination has to be based on some protected classification. So we get back to that classification issue. Um, anytime you're dealing with the equal protection, you have two classes, okay, and you have to put one group of people in one class, one group of people in another class, and then these two classes are treated differently by the government. And if the government is treating these two classes differently, uh, and the class that's treated poorly is a protected class, uh, then you've got illegal discrimination under the 14th Amendment. Okay, so... The court has divided this uh, analysis into three levels of what we call scrutiny. Scrutiny meaning how close is the court going to look at the discrimination to determine whether it's legal or illegal. So at the highest level, what we call strict scrutiny, the classifications are uh, things like race, religion, um, nationality, those kinds of things. And the court has said that basically um, these are um, what we call protected classes um, and they are protected because they are uh, people with what we call immutable characteristics. Immutable characteristics means that they were born this way and really can't change. So you're born black and you can't really change that. Um, so that's an immutable characteristic. In addition to that, the court says that to be in this strict scrutiny category, you have to uh, have a history of discrimination against that group of people. So if the law treats blacks and whites differently, then it's going to fall under strict scrutiny, and it's almost always, or it's always going to be struck down as unconstitutional and a violation of the 14th Amendment. At the lowest level is what's called the rational basis test. Okay? And the rational basis test basically says that it's not a uh, suspect classification like race or uh, religion. Um, it's another type of classification that is not protected um, by strict scrutiny. And therefore, um, if the government has a rational reason for doing so, it can do so. Um, so, for example, wealth has been determined not to be a suspect classification. So if the government treats rich people a little bit different than it treats poor people, then that is going to pass the rational basis test if the government has a good reason uh, for doing so. Now, those two classifications or types of um, a suspect class and strict scrutiny and non-suspect suspect class in rational basis um, were developed and then came along the first case involving discrimination based upon 
a person being female rather than being male, or sex discrimination. And the court really struggled with this. Is that an immutable class or immutable group? Um, is, it, is Should it be a suspect class? And the court really could not uh, decide uh, without a lot of conflict, so they reached a compromise. And the compromise was what's called intermediate scrutiny. Um, and that's not as strong as strict scrutiny, uh, but not as uh, weak as a rational basis. Okay, so um, it requires that the classification has to be uh, based upon a legitimate government interest uh, and uh, examples of the intermediate are gender uh, discrimination, as I just mentioned, and legitimacy, whether you were born in or out of wedlock. Um, so, depending upon the circumstances, um, the court in those situations may rule that the discrimination by the statute or by the law is uh, okay under the 14th Amendment, or it may rule that it's not okay under the 14th Amendment. So it's a little bit difficult uh, standard to apply. Um, so we looked at the rational basis test, uh, which looks at uh, evol involving economic or social welfare situations, and if any conceivable rational basis exists for that classification, it'll be upheld. And as I said, economic or social welfare are uh, situations like that. Okay, I'm going to stop there, and we'll pick up uh, with uh, video 8.